This Sports Desk episode gets a running start with the Pioneer League Cross Country Meet where there are more than just a few good runners. Can they make it to the postseason? In volleyball news, the Lady Spartan team is back in action after several tournaments. Are they weary or are they ready to go in this matchup versus West? More Warrior action as they take on the Saxons volleyball team. West revs it up early in the first set. Catch the highlights to see who settles it. In prep football, there was only one Torrance team that came out with the win last week. Is it West's best show of the fall? The El Camino Warriors are on the path against old rival Harbor College. Is it the Elko D or QB Omar Herrera that gets them the win? Get fired up because it starts right now. is officially here and every athlete has a few games under their belt. On this episode, we have cross country, prep volleyball, and of course football. Let's go ahead and get started. We start at Wilson Park with the Pioneer League cross country meet. South has a few stars that are expected to win. The boys had a legacy runner from North who surprised even himself. You want to know more? Well, reporter Patrick Alog tells us the rest. Last year, Wilson Park hosted the league finals as for the boys, North Torrance won it, while Torrance finished second, South finished third, while for the girls, Torrance finished second, South finished third, and North finished fourth. This year, Wilson Park is hosting the league opener. Let's take a look at the action and see how they did. Erica DiBiasio of South was one contender. For Torrance, they had Kayleen Morris and Alima Kuhn. A minute into the race, Stephanie Allen of North was in the lead. A third of the race through, Erica DiBiasio was in second, while Lee McCoon was in third. Halfway through, Erica DiBiasio was in second, but about 30 meters behind first. While Erica DiBiasio was alone in second, about 30 meters behind her was Lee McCoon and Kayleen Morris of Torrance in third and fourth respectively. While Anna Farello of El Segundo finished first, finishing 12 seconds behind her was Erica DiBiasio in second. Coming in third was Torrance's Elima Kuhn, while her teammate Kayleen Morris finished in fourth. The highest finisher for North was Stephanie Allen in 10th place. Erica DiBiasio didn't feel too good. It's a little disappointing just because I was used to getting first a little easier, but El Segundo has a great team. Elima Kuhn felt like she could have done better. Um, I felt that I did really well. Um, I kind of wanted to stay up with the, um, the girls in front. In team standing, South finished second. Torrance finished third and North finished fourth. There were some new contenders for the boys. In the first third of the race, Drew Sato of Torrance and Israel Cardono were neck and neck, and then halfway through the race, Cardono and Sato were still close by. But then in the final stretch, Israel Cardono of North pulls away for the victory, winning the race here at Wilson Park. Finishing second for Torrance was Drew Sato. I really expect to get first. <laughs> I kind of really expected like to be in the front, you know, in the front pack and just like see what I got. What are you going to try to do to improve upon a performance to try to get that finishing kick in the next race? Uh, hopefully I can work on some uh, tempos with our coach and maybe work on strides at the end of our workouts. In the team standings, Torrance finished first, South finished second, and North finished third. Reporting from Wilson Park, I'm Patrick Alog for the Sports Desk. Thanks, Patrick, for that cross-country wrap-up. The top finishers from Torrance were no surprise, really, and South's Erica DiBiasio came in second place. Not far behind her was Erica's toughest competition, Yulee McCung and Kayleen Morris from Torrance. Stephanie Allen from North showed up at the number 10 spot. As for rankings, the results are pretty similar to the individual finishes. And now for the boys. Top finishers from Torrance, David Cardona's brother, Israel Cardona, he is a Saxon and he was in first. Drew Sato and Hunter Johnson from Torrance were second and third, respectively. South's Nick Lofgren powered in at fourth place. And team finishes Torrance first, South second, North at third. We'll be catching you up on the runners from West in the weeks to come. That's all we have for cross country. Let's go ahead and talk some volleyball. The South Spartan volleyball team has had a busy preseason with a lot of tournaments out of town and even out of state. They also have a lot of returning talent that are making them a formidable opponent for all of the competitive teams here in the South Bay. West Volleyball, while well, they're struggling this preseason, 
They always manage to start strong in the matches, so hopefully this means they are just warming up. Ashley Morgado bumps this story your way. Hey, Bonnie. The Ferns come into tonight's game with a record of 10 and 4. They're coming off of a great win against Palos Verdes, where they beat them in three straight sets. Let's see how they do against a fellow Torrance school, West High School. This crosstown rivalry game was loud and pumping with excitement, especially after West captain, number 10 Katie Horton, started their home match with a serving ace. The tempo was set by West and South was forced to meet it. The game started strong for West. However, outside hitter and middle blocker for the Spartans, number four Katie Exum, stopped the Warriors with a big middle attack to then go on a five point serving run. I've been heard by, from them that they were going to come out super fired up and they wanted to beat us. That's like their big thing and I knew that if we didn't come out fired, they were going to just go right over us. Once the Spartans gained the lead, they showed no signs of stopping. Dynamic and powerful hitter number 11, Desi Kaleva, dominated at the net. Between the errors committed by the Warriors and the phenomenal execution by the Spartans, West lost the first battle with a score of 14-25. Head coach for the Warriors, Jen Haney, must have said the right words in between sets one and two because after the break, the Warriors came out with a vengeance. The two teams battled back and forth and stayed neck and neck until South pulled away in the middle of the set. The Spartans were up 10 to 16 when they made a lot of unforced errors that allowed West to catch up. During the second game, we gave up a lot, a lot of points, so we needed to get it together, focus mentally as a team, and put them away. Uh, we have this little mid-game lull sometimes where we kind of just we kind of just sit down for a second and we're like, oh, and then we get to 20, we're like, oh, we need to hurry. So everybody was kind of like, okay, we can't do that anymore. So even though they were fired up, we tried to match it, try to go higher than them and go forward and get the kills and win. With the tie score of 22 apiece in the second set, the pressure was on. South battled with a massive kill by sophomore number 10, Skylar Ceballos, to put them within two points of the set. A misconnection between setter Brooke Russell and middle Erica Eastley tied up the score at 23 apiece. Keeping their calm and having their undying confidence, South dominated the last two points and fought out the difficult win. You know, we have done this year a, a good job of staying calm. We've, we've been down a couple games uh, and, and found a way to come back and win. Uh, we've had some bad stretches in games and fought through them, and that's kind of what we had in game two a little bit. Um, and, and both my assistant coach and I looked at each other, we said, let's let them play it through, and, and they found a way to win, which was good. In the last set of the match, the Spartans showed why they are the team to be talked about in the South Bay. South started with an eight-point run, and with a huge lead like that, Wes was unable to catch up and take a set from the Spartans. Game tonight wasn't as well as we planned. Like um, at practice, we were really pumped, and um, we thought that we would have played a lot better. Um, I think our second game was the best game that we played like the, um, the whole night today. West, who has a phenomenal back row, couldn't keep up with the offense that South was running. And that is something that the Spartans take pride in. We're running an offense with, uh, with actually four outside hitters. Any of our hitters can hit on the left or the right or even some quicks. It's just a part of our offense. And again, with Desi and Tessa able to pass for us, um, we're able to run a lot of cool stuff, which makes it more fun. South took this matchup against the West Warriors. The Warriors didn't seem quite ready in that first match and it definitely rolled over into their third set where the Spartans definitely dominated. The Spartans are now 11-4 in season. For the Sports Desk, I'm Ashley Morgado. Thanks to Ashley for the match wrap up. South won in three sets to West. For South stats, you can make note that outside hitter Desi Kaliva and middle blockers Eric Easley and Katie Exum are making the impact for the Spartans. Tessa Fournier came up big with 14 digs. And league starts with South playing Torrance and West taking on Peninsula. With the winning preseason record, the Saxon volleyball team is proving they have the depth they tattered about in that fall preview. And the Lady Warriors are struggling this preseason. But in sports, hopefully the old adage, through adversity comes strength, will ring true. There are highlights from both teams in this story brought to you by Sports Desk reporter Ryan Fournier. The girls volleyball Torrance Showdown North versus West. Both teams competing in the guard tournament and North tournament played well. West came out looking pretty good. After being down 2-3, they went on four unanswered points. Right there, a score by senior captain Rachel Barker. And also on offense, they just looked really solid. Here's the set and the kill by Rachel Barker once again. They started rolling and coming back, and here's the set. And a kill by Darlene Lee, the junior. That's going to bring the Saxons within 7-8. to eight. 
Here's Jeanette Abel for the West with the ace right here. She's going to get a couple aces on her serves. Here's a set and the kill by Kazmary Berkey, the senior. Right after the timeout, the Saxons need to figure out a way to get back in this game. And here's the big block by the senior. Cameron Oles helped out by freshman Sabre and Roberts. Very next play, West answers right back with a sneaky kill right here by the senior captain, Rachel Barker for the West. Right here, here's a battle of the Nets right here with a big block by the junior, Kimberly Haney for the Saxons. They're coming right back. Once again, the battle of the Nets, West versus North. And a big block right there once again by Kimberly Haney, helped out by freshman Sabrin Roberts. Right here, here's the set by the freshman. And a big kill right there, Darlene Lee, the junior. Very next play, Darlene Lee just plunks it right over the net for the easy ace. That's a 6-1 to one run by the Lady Saxons. Gaining momentum on that 6-1 to one run, the Lady Saxons were in it the rest of the way. And a big seesaw battle, 23-all, 24-all, 25-all. But in the end, the Lady Saxons pull off the victory in game one, 29 to 27 to go up one zip. The Lady Saxons are looking strong and have a lot of momentum going into the second set. Here's the dig by Miranda Armijo, the set by Sadie Fraker, and the kill by Darlene Lee. The Saxons are up five to one into this second game. Right here, West needs to get back into this game. Here's the set by Jeanette Abel, and the kill by number five, Kazmira Berkey for the West Warriors. Right here, Jeanette Abel right here with another ace. That's going to put the West Warriors up 9 to 4. This time it's the Lady Saxons who storm right back into this one. The set by Sadie Fraker and the kill by Cameron Oles. And the Lady Saxons just proved to be too much for this West Warriors team once again in the second set and win 25 to 20. Right here late in the third game, here's senior Nicole Echeverry, the captain with the kill as North just comes out way too strong against this West team in the third game. Right here, West trying to convert, but it just doesn't happen. North goes on to win this one three games to zero. Trying hard to get better every day at practice, improve my skills. I think it's just passing and defense. We need to get better. We really wanted to win. We knew we should beat this team. And I think once we realized that once we just needed to fix like a little kinks that we had, I think once we did that, I think we just flowed really a lot better. So During the first time out in the first game, I told them, I said, West is louder than us right now, and it's our home opener. I mean, they came with a lot of fire, and they played really well. And I think we just kind of, once we got clicking, you know, it was just, again, stay together as a team. You know, do your job, because... If you can count on your teammate to get that dig and the setter to get you the set, then it just, it just flows. And you could see, you know, we made less mistakes, and we had good flow, and then the energy got going, and they got to celebrate on good plays, but they didn't get down on bad ones either, and that was important. As Coach Mark Peock said, having a great flow for his team really helped them out. The momentum push in game one where they were losing and came back really helped them with this 3-0 victory and move on to 8-2 for the season. Reporting from North High School with the Sports Desk, I'm Ryan Fournier. Thanks, Ryan. The Lady Warriors sure did start strong, almost winning that first set, but the Saxons took over and finished it off in three. Both teams start league this week. Let's take a quick look at a few other scores. The Lady Knights are capturing their men momentum in the preseason with a nice win, 3-1 over Notre Dame Academy. Ashley Murray and Bria Green came in with 13 kills. Juliet McCall had 10 kills. They start league this week against St. Joseph. The Lady Warriors got a win over the Beverly Hills Normans. The Tartars won in three sets, and Marisa McGinnis gave nine kills and three blocks to the team, and Stephanie Berger was a passing machine and served three aces. They begin league next week against Centennial. That's a volleyball wrap-up for now, but you can be sure that we're going to have plenty for you on the show next week. After the short break, we'll have the one football team that won under the Friday night lights. If I ride, I will know the way the trees smell after the rain. I will grow a heart so strong that hospitals will take Tuesdays off. If I ride, road rage will turn into laughter. And oil tankers will haul chocolate milk. And I won't be a boy or a girl. I will just be a rider. Hi, I'm Hall of Famer Tony Gwynn. 
Keep an eye on the sports desk. Welcome back. Let's move on to prep football. There was only one team in Torrance that secured a win last week, but it took a little more than just effort. It was a battle of the defenses and special teams. And West home opener, there were thrills, chills, and a lot of spills. And Sarah Pila shows us why at Warrior Stadium. Opening drive for the Warriors, handoff to Barry Thomas. He fumbles the ball, and it's recovered by El Segundo's Seth McKenna. Now it's Eagle ball. Daniel Zeman passes to Jamie Stewart and is hit by senior linebacker Chris Meepkins. Penalty on the Eagles pushes them back. Next play, Zeman is sacked by Ray Lima. You'll see Lima a lot tonight. 2.36 left to play in the quarter. Second quarter, Warriors driving. Bad snap to Nachi runs, but he fumbles the ball. El Segundo recovers. This is the second fumble tonight for West. 11.05 left in the half. And Ray Lima gets pressure and tackles Zeman. Lima really working hard all night for his team. 9.03 remaining. West is backed up to their one yard line. Notch throws a pick to Seth McKenna, who was wide open. Third Warrior turnover in the first half. Notch finds sophomore receiver Craig Nows for the 27 yard catch before he's finally taken down. The Warriors can't get in the end zone, so they bring out Adam Rahman and the kicking team, and he kicks it through. Warriors lead 3-0 with 2.36 left in the half. Now it's under two minutes left in the half. Notch gets hung up and loses the ball again. His third turnover of the night, the fourth for the team. El Segundo capitalizes. They answer back with a 25-yard field goal and tie it up 3-3. Now we're in the third quarter. Warriors driving. Notch passes to Ruse for a gain of 55. No one can get him down until Kendall Brown finally gets him down at the 12 yard line. Same drive. Notch to Nouse again, this time for the six points. You might want to get used to hearing Notch to Nouse. West now leads 10 to 3. Third quarter, Zeman finds Jamie Stewart, who's too quick for West. Dane Silverlake misses the tackle, and Notch can't get to him. Eagles answer back. Game tied at 10. 9.02 left in the game. Pressure by Justin Lacey for El Segundo. Notch throws incomplete. West will settle for a field goal. It goes through the uprights, and Warriors now lead 13 to 10, under nine left in the game. Down to the wire with 122 left in the game. El Segundo needing a touchdown to win. Zeman scrambles to find someone open. Instead, he finds Chris Wardor of West. Warriors hang on and win their second game in a row. I'm feeling great. You know, we knew we knew we had to play defense coming into this game. They we knew we, they were going to try to run the ball at first. We stopped their run. They tried to pass. They got they, they had some good catches in the beginning and some late uh, some good catches late in the game. But we we finished them off. As a team, I think we're doing very good every week with our new. Offense, no huddle, you know, it's hard to like just come in a new year and just do a new offense. But, um, you know, we've been working hard every day, doing tempo drills to get into it and work into it. And our offensive line is doing very good with it. And it's, you know, we're doing very good as a team. Yeah. Doesn't matter what kind of offense you run, you turn the ball over four times and, you know, you're putting the defense in a bind. And, and then things are going good and all of a sudden, boom, the ball's on the ground. And so I don't think we played too well tonight in that regard. Despite four turnovers tonight for the Warriors, they were able to edge out the Eagles 13-10 in their first home game. They're still adjusting to their new offense and will be preparing for town rival South next week. On the field at West High School, I'm Sarah Pila for the Sports Desk. And thanks to Sarah for that story. The Gold Star of the West defense, they really had a great game. They had five sacks, including two for junior Matt Bozen and two for Ray Lima. West held Elsa Segundo to 50 yards. 51 yards rushing, and quarterback Joey Knotts fumbled the ball three times, and two recovered by El Segundo, and one was cover, recovered by West, excuse me, and Knotts also completed 16 passes on 29 attempts. Dane Silverlake is a D-back and a running back who, along with junior Barry Thomas, made an impact in this game. Sophomore wide receiver Craig Knotts is someone to watch out for. And senior Sam Choi was impressive too. West will play South this week. Let's take a look at the Del Rey League. The Knights kept turning out touchdowns as soon as the Laguna Beach would score, but it just wasn't enough in the 28-23 loss. 
The running game was a turning and burning crew, and that included Mike Turner, Blake Alt, and Javon Saligia. And they all put in their time, and the Knights go to Verbum Day for their first league game. Let's take a look at the Pioneer League. The Tartars went to Hawthorne. Oh, how Torrance tried but just couldn't compete in the end with a 20-10 loss to Hawthorne. And running back Kwa Ko, he was a workhorse of that double wing tee. Torrance travels to the OC to take on Beckman High School. Palos Verdes 44, South 7 was the final score in this preseason game. QB Blaze Booth went 11 for 33 with 122 yards, no touchdowns and two interceptions. Running back Brandon Loera gave him 116 yards and a touchdown on 22 carries. And on D, he had two fumble recoveries. South's record is now 2-1. South and West play this week. The Saxons took on San Pedro at home. Running back Ryan McDaniel is still out with that knee injury. Quarterback George Hernandez went 22 for 36 and 280 yards and three touchdown passes. Michael Gerardo made 10 grabs with three touchdowns. North has a bye this week. Let's move on to the next level of football. Last season, the El Camino football team beat Harbor College, and this fall, Harbor comes through with a more potent offense. But you can't forget that the Warrior defense is one of the best in the South Coast Conference. There's a whole lot more to this story, and Sports Desk reporter Nick Ekpatani is back in the saddle to tell us all about the battle between the Warriors and Seahawks at Murdoch Stadium. El Camino would get off to a great start early in the first quarter as quarterback Omar Herrera finds Jeremy Anderson in the seam, setting him up deep in Harbor territory. But Harbor's defense approved to bend and not break, stuffing El Camino's Peter Walton at the line of scrimmage for no gain. El Camino would have to settle for a field goal on their first drive. Donald Hurin splits the uprights. El Camino up 3-0. After Harbor went 3 and out on their first drive, El Camino found themselves back at the helm. Herrera finds Marquise Waters for a big 16-yard gain. It looked like Elko would be rolling on their second drive, but don't count out that Harbor defense, bringing the pain on third day. But it wouldn't be long before El Camino would find themselves back on the board. Early in the second quarter, Herrera finds Jari level. And Jari is off to the races. 66 total yards for an El Camino touchdown. Their first of the day. Following the touchdown, things started to get real ugly for Harbor as they fumble in their own red zone, setting El Camino up with great field position. El Camino would once again have to settle for a field goal while threatening Harbor's red zone, but Donald Hurin splits the uprights. El Camino up 13-0. Although the Harbor offense struggled to get off the ground for much of the day, the defense was highlighted by the play of sophomore defensive end Austin Flynn. The former South High Spartan wreaked havoc on the El Camino backfield all day long, tallying over three sacks. He's being sought after by some of the nation's top college football programs. Late in the second quarter, El Camino would light up the scoreboard once again. Herrera tosses one deep, and off the deflection of a Harbor Seahawk, would find Jari Level once again for a touchdown. 46 yards. El Camino up. 20 to 0. In the third quarter, the usually high-powered Harbor offense would begin to produce. Chris Smith finds Deion Wills for Harbor's first touchdown of the day. Down 20 to 6, Harbor's Chris Smith is doing what he can to keep his drive going. Improvising, he finds Deion Willis with a shovel pass, keeping the drive alive. Late in the fourth quarter, Harbor finds himself on the two-yard line. Deion Willis plunges in for the go-ahead touchdown. Harbor now only down seven points. But the El Camino offense would step up late in the game, eating up the clock and keeping Harbor off the field. Final score, El Camino 27, Harbor 13. Talk to me, Austin. Three sacks on the day. Yeah. How do you feel you performed? Oh, it was good, but not good enough. We just didn't come out with a win. Uh, you know, we played hard as a defensive unit. Um, there was a couple of errors here and there, but we just didn't execute. That's pretty much it. Man, uh, our defense is real solid. You know, they play hard every every series. They was going out there playing hard. You know, and it was up to it, it was up to us to make the key plays because they was doing their job. Uh, you know, it was a big win coming from Coach Feathers, Coach Duncan. Like, it was. It was so big because how Coach Feder was in the locker room, I know it was a big win for him. Like, for the team, the players that were here last year, they were struggling with this team. But, you know, I had to step up as a freshman. Yeah, Nick, I'll tell you, we knew going in, Matt, Matt Kirk's done a nice job with our defense. We've had to go against those guys all spring, all summer, and it just makes us better on offense. We, we are a very good defensive football team. 
We have guys that fly around. We've got smart players. And, and I just think we're going to get better and better. We don't have a lot of depth there, but I think we have enough depth to get through the schedule. Feels pretty good to be 4-0, huh? Nothing like it. Nothing like it. I, and I, it's so neat for our kids. We, we just concentrate on one game at a time. Wrapping up here at El Camino College, where the stout defense of the Warriors were able to shut down the usually high-powered Harbor offense, winning by a score of 27-13. to I'm Nick Ekpatani, reporting for the Sports Desk. John Featherstone's squad pulled out another win against Coach Brett Peabody from Harbor College. Timothy Anger with two sacks and Terrence Haynes with one were just some of the stellar defensive players for the Warriors. Omar Herrera had a total of 291 yards. Big credit to Jari Love with his two touchdowns on only two chances. Running back Alondra Johnson had his standard showing. And congrats to the Warriors who are starting their conference run with a winning record. It's that time now where you can give us a heads up on events, athletes, games we might not know about. Give us a call at 310-618-5762. You can email us at thesportsdesk at torrentsca.gov. You can also view all of our shows online on our website, torrentsca.gov. And don't forget that 2010 and 2011 shows are on YouTube. That's about all the time we have for today. The league starts for volleyball this week. Football, you have a couple more weeks to work out those kinks. So until next time, Torrance, play hard.